G'day, I'm Ash, and probably one of the most best and probably most overpowered premium that comes out of this particular patch. Equa Strike has introduced the SU-11. This is a rush on rank 5, and today we're going to showcasing some gameplay from the point of view of turn fighting and doing weird things and, and having a bit of fun. So it won't necessarily be a focus on you know, the gunplay, because I still haven't yet mastered the 37, even though I play Russian Jets predominantly. That's okay, we've spot on F3D. We're going to absolutely nail him. There we go. Tail completely cut loose. And we're going to go have fun with a Kika. Kika is a similar aircraft. But before we go into that, this is a rank 5 premium, right? It's a battle rating 7.0. It's a Russian aircraft. There are two types. There's the SU-9 and the SU-11. I haven't flown the SU-9 just yet. I've, I've sort of just gotten a little bit burnt out with War Thunder as a whole recently just feels like the same old jargon but you know I'm getting close to unlocking all of the aircraft in the game I've only got two airframes left that being both F4 versions in the US tech tree but as you can see we've pulled up here I've put a couple of pop shots at the Kika itself and do so again my terrible aim is going to precede me though so he tries to get the shot and this is so much fun ducking dodging weaving this happens quite a lot everyone roll to the left pull up directly in front of a Kika, not necessarily a wise move, but we're similar power, we're similar sort of vibes, except that I have a better energy retention than the Kika does. That doesn't matter, I've got terrible aim anyway, so no matter what I do, it's just a matter of roly-poly. And I enjoyed this. This goes on for quite some time. If you want to skip ahead, you can do so. But I love this machine. 7,480 Golden Eagles is probably a little too high for a machine of this calibre, but hey, I've been seeing quite a few of them around, and I thought this thing was pretty interesting. Nevertheless, top speed of 940 kilometres an hour. Oh, come on, lead your shots a little more, and you would have been able to absolutely nail that guy. Would have been able to go back to base, rearm, and do any anything. That's okay, we've only hit his left engine there, so I'd say I've hit him pretty good, but his manoeuvrability doesn't seem to be affected at all, so I must have only just hit his engine. That's okay, put another couple of pop shots out towards the key here. He is aggressively turning, trying to get me off his six, and good on him. He's in an aircraft that can do so. <laughs> Try spinning. Ooh, 262 comes in for a bit of a play. I could have let the 262 have that one. Honestly, I've lost this particular engagement. We pull back up again, and essentially what happens is I end up by running out of ammunition before I can even kill this guy. But still, I thought I'd include it because it just shows you how maneuverable this thing can be, and... It's really important to remember that when you're fighting stuff like F-80s and, and stuff like F-2Gs and, and lower tier props. Because this thing does face your 6.7 and 7.0 uh, aircraft all the time. So this aircraft is not really, uh, I'd say, <laughs> it's not really broken, but it's not stupidly broken either. In the terms that it's actually quite decent, it's just my gunplay is quite terrible. I have no idea how many games I played before I ended up by actually getting a decent set of kills. But that doesn't necessarily matter, we're not showcasing that, I'm just having fun rolling around this kick and you're like, Oh, Ash, learn to aim. Yeah, alright, fair enough. Valid point. Trigger discipline is quite low considering I have played stuff like the A7D and all you have to do is hold right click while spinning in circles. Same with the Mirage in a way, you just yeet a missile and so on and so forth. So actually dogfighting is what I had fun doing. Like, he's pulling all the energy tricks, he's pulling inverts, you know, I'm trying to, you know, narrow my profile so he doesn't necessarily hit me. Pull back around, he's headed back to base. Look at him. Both engines completely gone. We still have the advantage here, except for the fact that we don't have any ammunition. And there's really not much else to show of this clip, particularly that you've got the idea that the Kika is a similar energy rate to this of the SU-11. Jumping straight into the next match, I have just taken off from the airfield when a Ditz decides to basically team kill me. Some guy in a 262 over there just decides to completely and utterly nail my tail. And that's when I have a distinct realisation. This thing can actually fly without its tail, provided that you're not in incredibly damaged, you can actually fly back to base. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a bit of a, uh, a hard turn around, come back in for landing. This was incredibly tricky, especially just narrowly avoiding those trees. I don't know how I didn't die there. Rip the edge of my wingtip off and managed to just coast it enough to back to base. Unfortunately, unsuccessfully, 
I still implode on the ground, but still, I thought that that was a worthy clip. Because we're going to successfully do it this time around. Right, jumping around into a different match, there is a Kai 200 up above us. Well, the only thing we can do is try and avoid him. He's more maneuverable than us. He's a smaller target. He's also a faster target. I don't know why I'm trying to gain speed here. I should be inverting and trying to get away from him as much as possible. The problem is those little stinky bastards will catch you. And his 30 mils do catch me. Now, do you notice something about the aircraft? I am still able to control the elevators, the pitch, and everything. So we're going to head back to base. This is going to be fun. Now, we've made it back to final landing here, and this is what really intrigues me. Being able to fly a long distance without any tail structure, any R fuselage with the horizontal and the vertical, kind of a bit odd for the machine like this. I have a feeling the flight model is not correct. Anyway, let's get on to an actual match where we actually do something. We'll get back to that aircraft and that match later, but this thing is incredibly interesting. 140 kilometers max speed, turn time of about 24 seconds, does have combat flaps, does have takeoff, does have landing, and does not have air brakes, arrested gear, or a drag chute. Try and pop one into that Corsair. Unfortunately, that Super Corsair is no longer, I guess, interested, and we're just going to extend. We're basically boom and zooming propeller-driven aircraft, and if you can avoid all the jet types of aircraft coming in your way, P-80s, F-80s, uh, Kikas, for example, F-3Ds, you'll be able to have a good time just fighting the propeller-driven aircraft. And something else shooting at me, I have no idea what direction from. There's the F-2G, and his buddy should be a popping up here in a second. We're just going to avoid him and going to extend out again, making our profile as difficult to hit as possible, and we're just going to extend. Come on, he does get a couple of hits into us, and his friend, the Johnny Walker 7, as I like to call him, is trying to catch up. Now, if I was in some sort of propeller like a Spitfire, or a, or a I don't know, maybe a F-84, not sort of propeller-driven aircraft, the F-8F is what I meant to say, I would have been long gone and dead. As you can see, just out-extending and keeping the propellers in one particular spot is really handy. So, what have we got? The wings rip off at 1,025 kilometers. The, the landing gear does at 420. Uh, the combat flaps rip at 558. Takeoff is 529. And landing's at 380. You can do 11 Gs plus, and negative, you can do uh, 4 Gs. Other than that, uh, it does have a 6 millimeter steel plate above the pilot. Uh, behind the pilot is 12 millimeters. Structural steel is in front of the fuel tanks, and the same with in front of the armament, per se. There is also a 90 millimeter bulletproof glass in front of the pilot, and there is self-sealing fuel tanks, which is, my goodness me, I think this thing should be a higher battle rating. All right, coming in on another super course here. He has an idea we're coming, but we're going to absolutely nail him. Yeah, like that. Just like that. Beautiful execution. His friends are like, ah, we're going to come shoot you, Ash. Well, no. Again, I'm playing this like I would a BF-109. And those guys are Hurricanes or Spitfires. Checking the leaderboard there. Now, this thing has 137 and 223mm uh, cannons. So, the 37 has 30 rounds, and then there are 200 rounds for 100 rounds of gun for the 23s. It can hold a 250kg bomb, and two 250kg bombs, then a one 500kg bomb as well, if you really want that. Now, it's got decent maneuverability, has great acceleration for an early jet, like superb acceleration. And provided you let your engines not overheat, as you can see, I'm sitting at 99%, no issues whatsoever. This thing can actually outclimb and, and do a lot of things a lot of meteors wish they could do, considering they also fight stuff like F-80s, P-80s, uh, and the likes of those early war jets, particular uh, 262s. I will say, this thing is due for rebalancing. <laughs> so if you want to pick it up and abuse it while you can, I highly suggest you do that. Anyway, we've picked up a little more altitude. Now we're going to dive in and help that F-8Fs. Finally, the friendlies are getting involved with this absolute murder hornet nest. And our prime target is the F-7F1. Now he's stalling up, and that's the reason why I picked him. A couple of well-placed shots, and bang, he's absolutely gone. Pulling directly up again, I could have just easily inverted straight into the 84. In fact, we might as well just do that. Stop playing with your food and stop keeping your energy and go straight for the kills. Would have been easy to get five kills here, but I decided against it because, oh no, 
there was a J7W down there, which is going to die in a few seconds. Come on. There we go. That is three kills. And you can see, with well-placed energy retention, that's not even a sentence, but you get the idea. In a well-put situation, this aircraft performs really well. Immediately should have inverted and gone directly after him instead of waiting that sort of time period, because now the friendly F8F has actually got time to sort of think about what he's doing and think about life's decisions and actually engage with the game. As someone on the enemy team said, oh, you have two F8Fs doing absolutely nothing on your team. Well, they came to help me out down here, as I was the only other fighter left alive at the time. Anyhow, this aircraft is fantastic. There is no doubt about it. I highly recommend it. Now, I could have easily got a, a shot in. Never going to get a second pass. He particularly does die to that F8F. And there is a B-29 that is in orbit who manages to get taken out by one of the other blokes. So there you go. Terror of the Sky mission accomplished. It's just a fun overall aircraft. I don't know what's bad about this particular thing. Don't take head-ons. Um, and, I mean... There's not really much else to say. It's a decent premium for once. All right, back to that other clip. So, we have just taken off in our repaired aircraft that we flew back to base, which we shouldn't have without a tail section. There's a HO 229, and there is an ME262. Now, he's looking incredibly fast. He wants some of the action. As you can see here, we're going to roll. Roll to the right. We're going to pull up. Sort of try to avoid the, the HO 229 as much as possible. Give him a narrow target. Pull directly under him. There we go. 262 realizes that there is a friendly nearby. Just watch him switch his combat uh, instincts in a second. But have you tried spinning? That's a good trick. As you see, I turn towards the F2H that is just down there. Managing to avoid the HO 229. And watch. They both divert their targets. And, and their attention to that one F2H has just taken off. I don't know why you would do that. You nearly had me. You could have easily won the game right there. Unfortunately, this HO229 is a little bit stupid. Decides to pull his aircraft directly up, and this thing has incredible energy retention. And in the same irony, he gets absolutely destroyed, like every Wonder Waffle. Go back to the land, and this is what happens next. The same guy that manages to kill me earlier, who ripped my tail off, comes back and is an utter bastard, and comes back and runway strafes him. See, he's got the skull on his name. Here he goes. He kills me a second time. What unfortunate luck that is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. That's it from me. Until next time, I guess sayonara. And uh, yeah, enjoy. My name's Ash. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio.